Hello, I'm Credis Jenkins, and I want to welcome you to this overview of Rose & Associates' play-based assessment of Unconventional Opportunities course. The course focuses on the early stages of assessing unconventional plays and identifying initial well locations within them. It exposes participants to all the key concepts and steps in the play-based assessment process, and then applies these to a real-life competitive bidding situation. The course is centered around a multi-stage exercise in the fictitious Pandora Shale play, where participants build maps to spatially quantify the in-place oil and gas volumes per unit area, identify target acreage by overlaying maps with components affecting well producibility, estimate play chance, establish value for candidate blocks, and formulate an entry strategy. When we use the term unconventionals, we're talking about low permeability reservoirs that generally require hydraulic fracture stimulation to produce wells at commercial rates. But whether we're dealing with conventional or unconventional accumulations, play maps are the basic tool for exploration decision making. In conventional exploration, we focus on identifying discrete structural and stratigraphic accumulations and quantifying both their size and chance of discovery. For unconventional exploration, where the chance of drilling a dry hole is relatively low, we focus on identifying areas where we believe the average well recovery will be sufficient for commercial success. These maps of the Fayetteville Shale illustrate why this concept is so important. The top map shows an area of high gas in place in red, which is created by favorable thickness, porosity, and gas saturation values. But there's no guarantee that wells drilled here will also have a high estimated ultimate recovery. In fact, the bottom map which shows high per well gas recoveries in red, has much greater complexity as a result of variations in permeability, natural fractures, pore pressure, and other factors that control producibility. As a result, maps of both volumetric and producibility components have to be generated and stacked to identify the most prospective areas. In this course, teams are created and provided with a series of maps that they contour. Stacking these maps provides insights into the volume of hydrocarbons in place, the hydrocarbon fluid types present, and the impact of producibility components. These maps are then combined with basic cash flow analysis to determine which areas have sufficient resource density to support profitability, as indicated by whether the percent recovery needed for commerciality is reasonable. The teams then prioritize which of the 30 grid blocks shown on these maps they would like to bid on, a lease sale is held, and the blocks are awarded. The goal is not so much to win the blocks as it is to invest efficiently, so your company is not a victim of the winner's curse. Teams discuss where to drill the initial wells, what the chances of geologic success, and what kinds of data should be gathered to reduce uncertainty and risk. Finally then, the wells are drilled, and if successful, development is simulated, financial outcomes are determined, and successful teams are rewarded. The course outline shows how we begin with foundational elements, including definitions, statistics, and mapping concepts. We then turn our attention to generating and stacking volumetric and producibility maps in order to locate the most prospective areas. Finally, we focus on elements of chance and strategy that the teams will use to determine which blocks to bid on, how much to bid, and where to drill their wells within them. Given that the course is built around the fictitious Pandora Shale, it's natural for participants to wonder how the concepts that are taught have been applied to real-world, unconventional plays. To help attendees understand this, we divide the class into teams and provide each with a poster that summarizes the characteristics and early exploration history of a commercially successful, unconventional play. Each team then makes a presentation to the class, summarizing the key points and focusing on which factors were most important to the success of the play. We then end the course by discussing some of the commercially available tools to conduct play-based exploration. We hope you've enjoyed this introduction to our play-based assessment of Unconventional Opportunities course. We invite you to visit our website where you can sign up for an open enrollment course and download a detailed description. We also offer this course internally to companies exploring for unconventionals. If we can answer any questions or provide more information, please send us an email. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in one of our future offerings.